and everybody, I never understood the appeal of anti-Semitism until I met this guy. <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> he is, uh, he does look extremely Jewish. He looks how Adam Sandler might look if Adam Sandler fell down a flight of stairs and caught Down syndrome. <laughs> Ari's what would happen if a dreidel knocked up a menorah <laughs> and the baby had Down syndrome. <laughs> he couldn't be any more Jewish if he circumcised his face. <laughs> now apparently, Ari at Kansas, he studied theater. Um, and we all know theater majors. Uh, the closest thing this guy ever got to the field was banging the lead of Van Yankees. <laughs> ESPN. Uh, theater jokes. Yeah, yeah, that was more of a gay joke. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, ESPN actually discovered Ari while he was in the JUCO ranks, and I'm not referring to Kansas, or we know Kansas is in a junior college, but it was the ranks of the Jewish co host, the JUCOs. <laughs> they knew he'd be a good fit for the Adams Theory when they heard his college show, The Hebrew Hypothesis. <laughs> Sean do a little bit on their show called um, Stock Up, Stock Down, where they take their stock up or stock down on, uh, on topics of the day. So I'm going to do a little Ari Stock Up, Stock Down here. My stock is down on Ari ever getting married. Sorry, but um, after what's been said tonight, there's no way she'd ever say yes. <laughs> and you guys have been together for seven, going on eight years. There's just something about your people that loves wandering around the desert wilderness for eight years. <laughs> You guys have 33 years left to catch up to Moses. I think you're on the right track. <laughs> <clears throat> My stock is up on Ari getting laid tonight. First, never underestimate the power of sympathy sex. And by looking at you, I'm sure that's a move you perfected. Uh, he earned some brownie points by choosing uh, a charity that Margot suggested, so that's good. And I've also, I've seen every single member of the dais here hit on Margot tonight. And after looking at this sad sack of unlovable losers, she's probably thrilled to be going home with a douchebag like you. <laughs> also, I hear she has a midget fetish. So that works. <laughs> and finally, my stock is way up on Ari, the man, the myth, the guy right here. Takes a lot of balls to agree to be roasted by your friends. Takes an even bigger set of balls to be roasted by a bunch of guys who just randomly emailed you. So uh, thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, when we first uh, we had dinner at um, Cover Three, and it was a lot of fun. He came in busting on himself. We knew this guy was going to be perfect. Um, I, I have listened to the show before. I do really enjoy it. You do a great job on the show. Thank you for. It's been a pleasure to, to work with you. A pleasure to insult you. Uh, you're a great guy. Thanks so much for letting us do this. Thanks, Bobby. He's not enthusiastic enough. <laughs> um, uh, just, just so y'all know, Ari and I have, have known each other for the better part of a decade, and. Um, we both went to KU. Our freshman year is when I met this guy, and um, finish the play thing. Our, our, to be honest, uh, all I can think of is the first moment that I met him, and that was uh, me getting off the elevator of the second floor of our ten-story dorm room. I'm sorry, dorm building, and um, g getting off on the second floor of your ten-story building when you're 50 pounds heavier than I am, which to put in context is is me plus one of Margot's breasts. Uh, I, and that's how much I weighed back then. It, it was an easy thing to poke fun at my weight, and Ari didn't do it. It was, it was the first moment I met him. And um, <clears throat> instead, he, he, he made light of the fact that I was wearing a Cubs hat. And at the time, I had no idea that Cubs and Sox fans hated each other. Ari was a big Sox fan. And um, you know, he asked if I was a Cubs fan. I said yes, and as the doors closed, he said, that's unfortunate. <laughs> and uh, my initial reaction was, what a dick. But my, my second reaction was, that guy is a Jewish person. <laughs> and it was, just, it, was, it was just his facial features. Uh, 
and his negative attitude. And uh, from that point on, we lived together for several years, and you get to know each other's strengths and weaknesses, and um, each other's uh, mutual passions. And one of our mutual passions was was the way we felt um, after inhaling burnt marijuana. And that, I mean, that was something that was one of our favorite friendship activities. And. Um, one of our biggest strengths is is his ear for the sound of a lighter being ignited. <laughs> oh, he's there to make sure that things are okay. Uh, he um, happy to happy to just help you smoke your own weed. Um, that's that's what I love most about him is he's just a, he's a helpful guy. Because um, let's face it, he's. He's frugal. He's, uh, that has nothing to do with his religious affiliation. I think if, if he converted tomorrow to Christianity or Islam, he'd be the second cheapest person I've ever met in my entire life. Margo is the first. So, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you guys both found each other. You make a, a great team. And, uh, in your case, you defy the laws of mathematics. Two negative ass people really do not make a positive. <laughs> uh, I've known I've known Margo for almost as long as I've known Ari, and um, I mean that that is absolutely the truth. We're here to honor Ari for the arduous backbreaking task of talking for three three hours a day, uh, and. And I, not many of you know this, but he, he's known that this was what he was going to do since he was a kid. At his bar mitzvah was themed W-A-R-I, Sports Talk Radio, I swear to God. And um, there's a picture of him at 13 with headphones on, smiling at his bar mitzvah. And I just have always found it very admirable that, it, that at 13 he knew he had a face for radio. And, <laughs> And uh, sincerely, I, I, I haven't spoken as long as everybody else, but to close it out, uh, I love you, buddy, and I don't say it enough because I'm, I'm honest. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Stewart Cheney. that even the late Andy Rooney once wrote an article on him talking about how he needs to calm down. He is also an extremely funny performer and the other half of the very popular comedy duo Joey, Jorak and Jorak. He's also the president of the Clint Howard Fan Club. Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Moss. Thank you, Bobby. If everybody could give it up for Bobby, he's done a great job. Thank you so much. Suggestion, the next time you're up at the podium, just speak a little louder. There's a woman in Pensacola who can't hear you. Um, Daniel, Daniel is a friend of mine. I don't have anything bad to say about Daniel. Looks sharp tonight. I love his beard. Looks like he's just gone down on Robin Williams. <laughs> Anna Brent, you did a great job up here as well. I love the Jim Rome reference, but next time, pick something that more people will know, like my mother's a car, you know, something like that. Um, Jake Rep, I don't know you, but apparently you're a friend of Ari's, and uh, you did know that you were going to be speaking in public tonight when you got dressed today, right? Because you, like, you look like Colin Farrell's gay stand-in. <laughs> and uh, Jaime, also did a great, well, you did a job up here tonight, which is what your people do. So, uh, but Bobby, next time, that's why it's not such a good idea to pick the roasters up in a Home Depot parking lot. <laughs> and then, then there's all these other guys who I don't know who they are. Um, this dais is as irrelevant as a Newt Gingrich wedding vow. Um, and if you look at this side of the dais right here, Everybody, except the guy on the end, everybody is fat. This looks like a this looks like this looks like a board of directors meeting for Goldie Farrell. In fact, 
fact, tonight, the bowling alley is being powered by all your collective blood sugar levels. <laughs> so let's move on to Ari, the man of the hour. I'm sorry, I don't know Ari that well, but I think that anyone who looks at Ari can just assume that he's cheap, right? <laughs> and that is not racist, it's just his haircut. I mean, look at that. He actually paid money for that. It looks like a moil did your haircut. <laughs> And speaking of racist, when I found out tonight that we would, I, we would be roasting, roasting a Jewish guy, I realized two things. Number one, it was going to be a lot of really tasteless ethnic jokes. And number two, I was going to be buying my own drinks. <laughs> <laughs> but Ari, of course, is on the Adams theory, like everyone knows. Ari and Sean Adams, it's like an unlikely pair. It's like an odd couple. When you go to the website for their show and you see that picture of them, it looks like a movie poster for the Adam Sandler remake of The Blind Side. <laughs> if you look at that picture of the two of them together, it looks like the most open and shut police lineup that you will ever see. <laughs> but I would guess that Sean has learned a lot from Ari, you know, the black guy and the Jew together, because there's a big cultural difference. Because for most black people, a yarmulke is the name of their third kids from their fifth baby's mom. <laughs> but congratulations to Ari, who's finally made it to the big time, coming up through the ranks of trying to be a broadcaster. It's a hard business to get into. You have made it to big time AM radio in Austin, Texas, where your peers on AM radio are Rush Limbaugh, Alex Jones, and 158 Mexicans playing accordions and singing about drug trafficking. <laughs> While all the other Jews are out running Hollywood and controlling the media and steering the world's financial market, Ari sits in a little room in Texas talking on the phone with grown men with names like Longhorn Bob about growing injuries and the intricacies of the eye formation Ari, let me explain something to you. Normal Jews don't care about things like that. Normal Jews don't care about Tim Tebow. When Tim Tebow is on one knee, he is not praying for your people, okay? <laughs> he's going to heaven because he's a Christian. <laughs> so, when I knew I was gonna be doing this roast, I started listening to the Adams Theory and I realized in the world of sports, I would much rather be watching women's basketball than listening to your show. I would rather listen to women's basketball than watch your show. I would rather listen to a woman than watch your show. Because women are horrible. But we all know that in addition to that, in the past, and I understand a little bit now that you've been the voice of the Austin Toros, right? How do you even consider that broadcasting? The Austin Toro, the girl who announces that your table is ready at the Buffalo Wild Wings has more of a claim to be a broadcaster than anyone doing any work for the Austin Toro. And she's also not going to hell because she's a Christian. But you can only assume that his mother and his family were probably very proud, the Jewish family, oh, he grew up and he got this job that he's always wanted, until it was explained to them that it was the Austin Toros, not the Austin Toras. <laughs> so, <yeah>, Ari <laughs> has been trying to break into broadcasting for a very long time, because what else is he qualified to do? He could stand on the lawn of a rich white person dressed as a jockey. There are not that many job descriptions that say wanted pocket-sized Jew needed to stand around in a Kansas t-shirt with a stupid look on their face. I don't want to say that Ari is super Jewish, but in Hebrew, Ari Temkin means dreidel-making diamond merchant who thinks it's too cold in here, but he's not going to complain about it. If you say, if you say Ari Temkin three times, you summon the cast of Seinfeld. Ari Temkin, spelled backwards, is Jewy Jewerson. <laughs> and in doing some research on Ari, I noticed that there was some YouTube footage that you can find, if you do a Google search for your name, of Ari participating in a scintillating go-kart race, which is still more exciting than watching anything Dana Patrick does, 
because she's a woman and women are horrible. <laughs> but to be fair, when watching that video, you have to realize that for someone Ari's size, a go-kart is like a Hummer. And on the salary of an AM radio sports broadcaster, that is as close to having a Hummer as you are ever going to get. Plus, you have a Jewish girlfriend, so you will also not be getting a Hummer from her either. <laughs> So we understand that his, we understand that his girlfriend Margot, they have been what going together for eight years, and you still haven't married this woman. I've got something to tell you, Margot. There are a lot of things that you can look forward to if you marry a man like Ari, a man who makes as much money as an AM radio sports talk show host does. There will be no more box wine for you. You will be drinking it directly from the bag. <laughs> You can look forward to having Bill Self's name called out during your lovemaking sessions while a fathead of Colt McCoy watches you. You can look forward to having your friend Sean over for dinner and having to explain to all your neighbors that he is a guest and he is not casing your houses. And that he is not looking at your daughters. Well, he might be looking at your daughters if they're white and fat. <laughs> Sean, I know, I'm sorry, You're, Sean is much bigger than me, so please, after the show, don't hit me or carjack me, please. But I've got to say, I've got to say that Austin is probably a great place for a guy like Ari. It's a creative town, it's got a creative vibe. You think of all the things that go on in Austin with music and filmmaking and all that cool stuff, and, and I think you're a lot like, uh, you're a lot like an Austin indie film. You're both short, you don't look that great, and nobody outside of Austin gives a crap about you. <laughs> but I would like to say, in seriousness, that I have listened to your show. It is a really good show. You do a great job. It's really funny to hear the interplay between you guys. You're very knowledgeable. Surprisingly, you have a very great voice. You don't sound like how you look. It's, it's, and I don't have a girlfriend, so you're already one up on me. And, uh, I love the show. Thanks for being a great sport. Rock, chalk, Jew hawk. Thank you. <laughs> Scott Moss, who after that bit he just did, he's not going to have a girlfriend tonight either. I don't think. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our final guest of the evening is the most important and the reason why we are here. We've talked about him, we've laughed with and at him, and we have honored him. And now, he gets his revenge. Ladies and gentlemen, co-host of The Adams Theory on ESPN Austin's 104.9, and our man of the hour, Ari Temkin. First of all, I feel horrible for Sean. He doesn't get to defend himself. And for those of you who don't know who Sean is, uh, you probably can't see him, but he looks like a floating sweater. I'm, I'm really lucky to have uh, so many people that I don't know talk crap on me. Uh, I'm really the jokes on all of you because I'm not famous, nor have I accomplished anything in my short life. So I don't know what that says about everybody else on this day. But... Thanks. Um, Scott Moss. Shocking, he doesn't have a girlfriend. I know. Um, I'd like to make, make fun of his haircut, but he doesn't have any hair. Um, and I've got to get done quickly before Scott dies. <laughs> Daniel Sautel is here. Uh, Daniel actually grew up in the Westboro Baptist Church. Yeah, those nice people. The, uh, the angels that picket uh, soldiers funerals. Great church. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. I'm just speaking in tongues so I can translate what I'm saying for Daniel over here. Uh, Daniel is married, and I know what you're all thinking. Yes, yes, he's married to a woman. <laughs> and uh, Daniel is not getting laid tonight. That's because he's, um, he's not married to a man, so. <laughs> Jaime Rodriguez, is, he, is it Escobar? Is it uh, Gonzalez? Is that what it is? Sorry, thank you. Um, Jaime wrote his speech on an iPad. Don't worry, everybody. I've called Best Buy, and I've found their stolen iPad. 
Jaime looks like the Unabomber if he was trapped in his shack for 15 years binge eating. <laughs> Jaime's birthday is New Year's. At least we're just assuming that's a guess. Uh, Bobby Di Pasquale is here, and yes, he's German like his name would recommend. Bobby's from Kentucky. That's the punchline. They still think the South won the Civil War. Kentucky is such a dumb state that they add R to the word wash. It's not wash. You don't wash anything in Kentucky, Bobby. Short jokes from Bobby. Really? Really? Kettle, meat pot. Bobby looks like Chaz Bono. Just, just not as manly. Bobby's an actor, which means he's unemployed. Uh, Derek Vandy's here. I think that's his name. I just met him, but I found out he's Iranian. And uh, now I'm a little worried that we didn't have any metal detectors here. Seriously, I'm afraid if I make any jokes about Muslims, I might get blown up. Uh, Brett Foshi is here? Yeah. Um, he looks like Louis C.K. with an extra hundred pounds. Um, Brett, would you please just let Ferris Bueller have his day off and stop trying to chase him down? <laughs> Brett Foshi is so drunk, he doesn't even know who he's roasting. He called me Ari Tompkin twice. Uh, my great friend Zach T. Bloom is here. Zach and I went to Jewish camp together for years. Uh, and then, randomly, we both ended up in Austin. Um, if Zach looks familiar, it's because he once competed in the Austin Air Sex Competition. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, look up the word pedophile in the dictionary. <laughs> Zach was the one looking more pathetic than everybody else. Uh, Zach has a pretty extensive resume. Let's take a gander, shall we? <laughs> um, it says here that Zach was the nanny of the Banks family. Are you sure that was you, Kiba? Are you sure that wasn't Mary Poppins? <laughs> Zach's resume resembles that of a 15-year-old girl's, like something out of the Babysitter's Club. <laughs> Zach literally once got fired from a job for having a blog called Toys Banging Toys. <laughs> it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, maybe, maybe not. It's not toys, it's not sex toys. But instead, it involved pictures of desk toys at work in different sex positions. I'm not making this up. My biggest question? Why did you have My Little Ponies, Buzz Lightyear, and Woody on your desk at work? Does not seem meant right for a grown man to have that at work. That's just me. Zach and logic and reason are not synonymous. Zach is just like Forrest Gump. I'm also really excited that Jake Rep has graced us with his presence from Dallas, Texas. We're so lucky that Jake removed himself from his busy schedule doing absolutely nothing to join us here tonight. Thanks a lot, Jake. Jake left a six-figure job to go to film school, and as you can imagine, he's broke. Not sure really how Jake is dressed. He kind of resembles that of a homeless hipster. That joke's pretty good here for eyeball. <laughs> Stu Cheney's here. And he was nice enough to roast me tonight. Um, in case you weren't aware, Stu used to look just like Jaime. <laughs> well, maybe not that portly, but portly nonetheless. Uh, Stu is a prime candidate to be the next Jerry Sandusky um, because he's the type of person that would just completely catch you by surprise. I mean, I mean that with a great deal of charm, honestly. <laughs> Stu is squeaky clean. Squeaky. I mean, he's extremely good looking, he's witty, and he's the perfect family. Something has to be wrong with him. Something has to be wrong with him. My guess is it's because he molests children. <laughs> um, Stu has a ton of dogs, his family has a ton of dogs, and in college, Stu wanted to add another dog to the mix, so he found Bruges, the puppy bloodhound, that was probably inbred and mildly schizophrenic. We didn't see the element at first, 
but after the first bloodthirsty attack, we knew we were in for something. Stu's bloodhound Bruges lived with Stu, our friend Josh, who's in the crowd, and me, and four of our friends in our 115-year-old house in Lawrence, Kansas. Yes, seven college guys in one packed house was the perfect setting for a puppy bloodhound. I wonder why that thing went crazy. <laughs> Appreciate everybody being here tonight. Thanks a lot for coming out. And I'm just sad that Sean doesn't get to roast other people because Sean probably got it the worst of anybody. But.